everyone! Welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is marvelous that you were here with me today for another Masterpiece Monday. Today we'll be talking about the artist Alma Woodsy Thomas. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and below each video click the thumbs up. Also, if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you so much. All right, let's move on and talk about Alma Woodsy Thomas. Have you heard her name before? She is such an interesting woman, and I think you are really going to love learning about her. So she was born in 1891 in Columbus, Georgia. She was a very creative child, and she really enjoyed making things like puppets and sculptures and plates, and she made those mainly out of the clay from the river behind her home. Though she was interested in the arts, she was not allowed to go into art museums as a child because she wasn't white. Alma lived in a pretty bleak period of our nation's history. During her lifetime, blacks and whites could not attend the same functions or places at the same time as each other. And in many instances, blacks just simply weren't allowed in many places that whites were. This is something that Alma would deal with her entire life, and she still truly would be dealing with it today if she were still alive. We've made lots of progress on race relations, but there is still plenty of work to be done. And I'm telling you that we as adults are depending on you as kids to continue fighting the good fight and making sure that equality is truly equality for all. So back to Alma now. Her family moved to Washington, D.C. when she was a young child because Georgia was not a safe place for black people to live. Washington, D.C. was better, though it wasn't perfect, but Alma was quoted as saying, at least Washington's libraries were open to Negroes, whereas Columbus excluded Negroes from its only library. So again, more evidence here of blacks and whites not being equal. But anyway, Alma found her place in Washington, D.C. She took her first art class in high school there, and she is quoted as saying, when I entered the art room, it was like entering heaven. In high school, she also excelled at math and science, and she loved architecture. She thought about becoming an architect, but it was unusual for women to be architects at that time, and that fact kept her from entering the field. So she became a teacher in 1914 and taught for many, many years. And she would not actually become a full-time artist until she was 68 or 69 and after she had retired from teaching. Her artwork started as representational but became more abstract as she continued painting. And here is the thing that I find the most interesting about her artwork. She says that she focused her work on creative spirit rather than race or gender. I think that is really impressive and a really interesting thing that she did, considering all that she experienced growing up. So today we are going to honor her spirit, and we are going to do a painting in Alma's style. And we are going to try to recreate this painting that she did with watercolors and black oil pastels. All right, so to do this, you will need a few supplies. You will need a piece of watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, that's okay. Use a piece of cardstock. You'll still want something that's a little bit firmer than just regular paper, but cardstock should work fine. And then you'll need some watercolors, and you will need a paintbrush and some water. And then of course it's always good to have paper towels on hand when you're painting. And then you will need a black oil pastel. If you don't have one of these, you can use a black crayon as well. All right, so let's get started. So we are going to try to recreate this beautiful, flowery, uh, colorful painting that Alma painted. So we are just going to simply start at the left and move to the right. We're going to go ahead and paint first and then we will go back in and add these lines, uh, the stalks of the flowers. So we're just going to start with purple and we're just going to dive right in. All right, so we have our watercolors and we remember that with watercolor you have to put some water in the paint before you get painting. So I put my brush in my water and now I am going to put my brush into the purple and I'm going to get it good and wet and I'm going to get the, um, or good and painty I should say, and I'm going to get my brush full of paint. And then I'm going to start over here on the left hand side of my uh, paper and I am just going to simply make some kind of 
small little strokes. And when my paintbrush runs out of paint, I'll go back for paint. And I am just going to continue on down kind of, well, close to the edge of the paper. Just like that, you can kind of see I'm kind of angling, just so that it kind of pulls together at the bottom in something kind of like a bouquet. I can imagine that down below this, someone is holding that bouquet of flowers. All right, so once I have my purple, then I am going to go on to the next color, which is blue. So I put my paintbrush in the, the water and I scrubbed it down on the bottom to get all the purple out of my brush. And now I am just going to do the same thing after putting my paintbrush in blue. I am just going to kind of make some hash marks, some short little lines, and I am going to come down here to the bottom, just kind of angling my way down. All right, now we're going to move on to green. So I'm going to scrub my brush on the bottom of my jar or container and then I am going to put some water into the green and I'm going to make sure I've got lots of green on my brush and then I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm kind of just working my way down. I see in Alma's the green is a little bit lower than the blue so I started a little bit lower. Of course your interpretation may be a little bit different and that is totally fine. All right, my green is done, so now I'm going to scrub my brush to make sure I have all my green off, and I am going to move on to red. So I can kind of see here that there is red, and then there's a pink. So I don't have a pink watercolor, so what I'm going to do is I am going to make my red a little bit darker. I'm going to use a little less water for the red, and then I'll add some more water. When I'm done with the red, I'll add some more water to it, and that will make a lighter red, which is pink. All right, so I have my wet paintbrush. I am adding my uh, water to my red, and now I want to make sure that I have a dark er red so I'm really scrubbing it around there and now I am going to do my red and I see right there I'm starting to kind of run out of paint so I'm going to put my paintbrush back in and I'm doing this a little bit more I'm making sure that I have more paint on my brush with this red because I want this to definitely be seen as red and then when I move on to my pink I will add just more water there all right, so I've got my red there. So now I am going to try to lighten my uh, red just a little bit to make it pinker. So I have lots of water on my brush and I just barely dipped into the red. And now I am going to start my pink. So the pink starts a little bit higher and you can see that because of the extra water, my red is a little bit lighter and then I can just kind of spread it around too. Like you saw I had a big red dollop right there. No worries, I can just spread it around. I'll just add some more water. All right, there we go. Okay, now it looks like we just have one more color and I am going to add the yellow now to complete out the painting. So I really, really scrub my brush here because I definitely want to get all of that color out because yellow is a very light color. And if I had another color on my brush, it would definitely show in the yellow. All right, so I'm adding some water to the yellow and then I'm going to start up here a little bit and make some hashes kind of coming in so that it still kind of comes together down here at the bottom as that bouquet that I was talking about. All right, so there we go. I think that I have, you know, I'm going to add just a little bit more yellow out here. I kind of see that I started kind of angling in and I didn't quite get the angle on the other side to come in. So I'm just going to add some more yellow up here at the top, which will make your eye kind of see it as angling in just a little bit. All right, so there we go. At this point, I am going to wait for my watercolor to dry and then I will come back to add in these black lines. If you are a little bit impatient, I usually am, um, you can go ahead and grab a blow dryer and dry your art, but you want to make sure that it is completely dry before you start with your lines. So I am going to wait for this to dry or I'm going to go get my blow dryer and I will come back and I will meet you here with a completely dry watercolor ready for the lines. All right, I'll see you soon. And I'm back with completely dried watercolored flowers. So now all I'm going to do is take my black pastel and I am going to draw my stalks and my stems in to make my completed flowers. So I am just going to simply look at the piece and then I am going to kind of try to draw my lines similar to Alma's. So 
I am just going to kind of draw a line in there, draw a line in there, and then I will kind of continue on. Now, does this have to be perfect? Not at all. And you can include as many stalks and stems as you want to, or you can leave out as many stalks or stems as you want. It's your call. It's your art. It's inspired by Alma's, but it is not exactly like it, of course, just like flowers are not exactly alike, right? So I'm just putting a few stalks and stems in here. You'll see that I am really going over my lines as I go. I think that there's something that's really cool about the darkness of the lines. So this is something that will be easier if you are using black oil pastel. It will be a little harder to do if you're using crayon, but it definitely can be done. You just go over and over it, and you get that really dark uh, contrasting line. All right, so I am just finishing out here, looking kind of backwards at the <laughs> painting. Obviously, you could have a painting um, just right out in front of you, which will make it a little easier. All right, well, I think I am going to call this one done, and I now have some beautiful watercolor flowers just like Miss Thomas's. If you did this, I would love to see a picture of yours. Please ask a grown-up to take a picture of yours and put that on our Facebook page. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and learning a little bit about Alma Woodsy Thomas. Oops, that's not her, that's her beautiful painting. About Alma Woodsy Thomas. I hope you have enjoyed learning about her. I hope you've enjoyed recreating some of her art. I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll be doing a Test Tube Tuesday video, so I can't wait to do some science with you. But until then, thank you so much for joining me for this one. Thanks so much for kidding around with me. I'll see you next time.